On Monday, August 29th, 2016, Mark and Jacoba Tromp, along with their three adult children, got into the car and drove away from their family farm near Melbourne, Australia. They left their phones, their credit cards, and their passports behind. They left the doors unlocked and keys in one of the car's ignitions. Papers for their family business were stacked chaotically throughout the home. Over the next six days, each member of the Trump family would be found, one by one, but none of them would be able to explain what happened. Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, I do videos on creepy and disturbing things. Like I said, the Trump family lived on the outskirts of Melbourne, Australia. We have dad, Mark, who was 51 at the time. We have mom, Yokoba, who was 53. And together they had three children, Rihanna, who was 29 years old, Mitchell, who was 25, and Ella, who was the youngest at 22. The family had a red currant farm. And if you don't know what red currants are, they're like in the gooseberry family. They're just this berry plant. This was the family business and all five members of the family did work on the farm in one way or another. So as the story started on Monday, August 29th in 2016, the family took off together for a road trip. Mark, Yakoba, and all three of the adult children got in the same car together for an electronic free and cash only road trip. Police thought that because of the really odd state that their home was found in and the fact that they didn't seem to have cell phones and only cash, this meant that the family for whatever reason didn't wanna be tracked, which made them think that maybe this wasn't just some road trip or vacation, but the family was fleeing or running from something. Both Mark and Yakoba, his wife, had been showing signs of stress and paranoia lately. At least one of them were pretty sure it was Mark, thought that somebody was stalking their family relentlessly and was gonna come and kill them all to take all their money. So here's the events that at least we know of, of their road trip. Mitchell, the middle 25 year old child, was the first to leave the family. The whole family piles in the car and goes. And then at about 30 kilometers or in US metrics, 18 and a half miles away from the farm, the family discovers that Mitchell actually did sneak a cell phone into the car. Apparently Mitchell did not think that they were in danger and was just going along to make sure that his family stayed safe. However, once his parents realized that he had the phone, they made him throw it out the window to get rid of it and destroy it. They clearly thought that the phone was tracking them and did not want anything to do with it. The family drove all day and all night until they got to a town called Bathurst, which is about 800 kilometers or in US metrics, almost 500 miles away from their farm. At 7 a.m. on Tuesday morning, Mitchell had decided he had enough. He decided that he was gonna go home. So he separates from the family and takes the first train back to Melbourne. The family just lets him go and they continue to drive. Now heading east, the family didn't stop again until they got to a popular tourist area, which was the Janolan Caves. It was here that the other two daughters, Rihanna and Ella, decided that they were gonna separate and take off as well. They stole somebody's car in the Janolan Caves and then they drove all the way down to a town called Goulburn. It was there that they would call the police and report both of their parents missing. So to recap, we have mom and dad still on the run together. Mitchell went home that morning and Rihanna and Ella stole a car. Rihanna and Ella then soon after this decide that they need to separate from each other and at a gas station where they stop, they do. Ella, the 22 youngest daughter, decided that she needed to head home. She said the horses needed to be fed. They were all alone and so she decided that she was going to go home as well. Ella took the stolen car back home and she arrived on Tuesday night where she was greeted at the home by police officers. Mitchell then showed up the next morning. He had taken the train so it took him longer to make it home. So now Rihanna is just by herself. She hops in the back of some guy's utility vehicle. Unlike Ella and Mitchell, her two siblings, 
siblings, Rihanna seemed to be struggling mentally the most. The driver didn't notice that there was anybody in his car for an entire hour. The driver at first was of course shocked and startled to find somebody in his car, but after talking to Rihanna briefly, he discovered very quickly that she was in this weird catatonic state. She couldn't remember her name and she had no clue where she even was. Rihanna was then thankfully taken to the Goulburn Hospital and she was put under psychiatric care. Because of her mental health struggles, she never got charged for stealing the car or anything else that she had done. Ella originally did get charged for stealing a car, but the charges were eventually dropped by the owners because I think they understood the situation and after they learned about the situation, they kind of knew the girls didn't know what they were doing. Okay, so three of the five family members are accounted for, but Mark and Jacoba, the mom and dad, are still on the run. So it seems that they then decided to drive south again back to Melbourne. But then when they got to a town called Wangaratta, the couple then decided to split up from each other too. Mark kept the car and Yakoba took public transport up north again. She was finally located by some good Samaritan in a town called Yas, where she was apparently just wandering around in this really agitated state. When she was found, everybody knew that her daughter was in the hospital in Goulburn, so they took mom to that same hospital where the pair of them were reunited, but they were both held in psychiatric care. Mark stayed in Wangaratta. It's just Mark at this point. Everybody else has been accounted for. Mark apparently had tailgated a couple so badly in the original car they all left in that the couple was scared and pulled over. The couple, of course, hoping that Mark would just pass them and leave them alone. Instead, Mark stopped as well, got out of the car and ran towards the couple's car. He then suddenly stopped in the middle of the road, stared at the couple for a full minute, and then fled, just walked away, leaving the original car at the scene. He wasn't found until Saturday, which was six days after all of this started. He was found near the Wangaratta airport, again, just on the side of the road, kind of in this weird state. He was finally released to a family member. I believe it was his brother. And as they were driving away, Mark flipped off all the photographers and the media that were there. But I guess I don't really blame him for that. However, soon after all of these events, Mark, when he was questioned, he did apologize for the craziness that had occurred because of their weird road trip. And he thanked the community for all the resource they put into trying to find the family. But as far as we know, the family never had a real stalker and they were never in danger. No one in the family had ever been diagnosed with any mental health issues either. There was zero evidence that anybody in the family had taken drugs before or during the trip. They had no debts that they knew of. They didn't belong to a religious group, nothing. There was just no logical explanation for why they took off. But I wouldn't be talking about this story if we didn't have at least a few theories as to what happened. So of course they asked Mitchell and Ella, who seemed to be the most mentally stable in the family during this whole ordeal. But even they said that it was really hard to explain the events that led up to the trip. They said of their parents that they were just fearing for their lives and then they decided to flee. A very popular theory and a strong one at that is that this was some type of folie à deux. Folie à deux is French for madness of two. Folie à deux is a very, very rare mental illness that happens often in close-knit families. They basically suffer from mental illness together and then they get in this cycle of enabling each other's delusions and then reinforcing each other's delusions. So it's thought that perhaps this was Mark and Yacoba and then they kind of got their kids to believe some of this as well. Another possibility that people think is that there were some sort of chemicals on their farm that affected the whole family since the whole family did work on the farm. Maybe Maybe they all inhaled some of these really toxic chemicals on the farm and it caused 
delusions or hallucinations or this instability. It is a popular theory, but it has allegedly been ruled out by authorities. But to me, I think this is one of those things that there's a possibility the hospital didn't think to test them for that or weren't able to test them for that particular toxin. This has been known to happen like in the olden days when people would work with mercury and stuff, it would cause madness. Even though we don't use the word madness anymore, I don't think that's very PC. So along those lines, many people wonder if the family got low key carbon monoxide poisoning. Carbon monoxide poisoning can cause some really, really scary symptoms in everybody in the home that is experiencing it. It definitely can cause confusion. And I have even heard some stories about it causing auditory hallucinations or delusions. One story, one famous story even that everybody in the family was having carbon monoxide poisoning and they were all sure that their house was haunted. But most of the time, carbon monoxide poisoning also causes flu-like symptoms. It usually comes with fatigue, often headaches, stomach upset. So you'd think that at least one person in the family would have noticed or have been having these symptoms as well. And then later, the family also said that they were really embarrassed by what happened. They didn't want to be famous, they didn't want to be in the media, and they were pretty much just overall really ashamed of their actions. So if it was carbon monoxide, you'd think that they would actually come out and say that pretty quickly because that would definitely not be their fault. It's less stigmatized is all I mean. And you'd think they'd come out with that as an easier explanation and then take some of the stigma off of their situation, said so many people blame mental health on the actual person. You would also think that Rihanna and Yakoba, who were at the hospital under psychiatric care, would have been tested for that or they would have thought to kind of test for that. I mean, this was in 2016. It wasn't that long ago. It probably would have occurred to somebody. People are also very skeptical about this theory because the family was missing over almost a week. So if they had gotten the poisoning and then they had distance from the house for several days, wouldn't they have come to their senses? And you'd also think that the poisoning would have returned when they all came home, unless the carbon monoxide leak miraculously cured itself. So I guess all in all, technically this theory is possible, but just highly unlikely. In an interview with Rihanna, she does admit that it was kind of Mark who started the whole family on all of these thoughts. He was on his way to a quote unquote mental breakdown before any of these events occurred. The stress was making it worse and Rihanna did admit that she started to believe the delusions along with him. All in all, this case does seem pretty cut and dry. Like you'd think that, yeah, it was fully ado or some kind of group psychotic episode that caused all this, but, if you think about it, there's still a lot of questions left unanswered. First being, why did all the children go along with the road trip, especially the two, Mitchell and Ella, who were pretty clear headed and knew what was going on? You'd think they would just call the police. I know they were trying to keep their family safe, so that explains that, but it just kind of seems odd that they just went along with it in the beginning. The biggest question for me is, why the hell did they all decide to split up so much? If they were convinced that somebody was after them, why did they split up one by one? I understand the two children that didn't really believe it. Okay, they just decided they had enough and headed home. And they decided that going to the police would be better than just going along with it. But Rihanna leaves her parents alone and then her parents proceed to split up from each other. I just don't understand this part. If it was fully ado, you'd think that they would all want to stick together because they'd be so paranoid. But also, I'm no mental health expert, so what do I know? Also, Rihanna and Ella stealing that car. They never explain how they did this. And that's like a huge crime. And this part of the story is pretty glossed over all in all in the media. If they've never had a criminal history, which it sounds like, how were they able to just do something so major all of a sudden? Or were they just so desperate to get away from their parents that they didn't think they had a choice maybe? And if that's the case, what does that mean about the way the parents were acting? It must have been pretty scary. So a lot of people to this day believe that there's some big piece of this story that we're missing and that was never released to the public or that the family is keeping private, which of course it's, really none of our business in the end. They have every right to keep it private if they want to. So 
maybe they just made up this story or they went along with the psychotic break so that people would believe them and finally leave them alone. Even though it was embarrassing, it turned out to be better than the truth. But people seem to think that there was something so big missing and it was so bizarre that the family knew that they couldn't tell the truth because nobody would believe them if they did. I heard a rumor that the media actually offered the family a lot of money for a full on interview and the family declined. Again, just a rumor that I read on some forums. I'm not saying that that is 100% fact. But if this did in fact happen, that kind of furthers the theory that the Trump family is very, very set on keeping this a secret. And whatever it is, they cannot or they will not tell us. All in all, just a very strange case. I find this case especially strange because thankfully, I mean, nobody dies in this case and nobody was even seriously injured or harmed, at least not physically. So that's good. But I have never heard of such a bizarre case where somebody didn't get injured or, you know, pass away, it seems like. So this one's just baffling. It, the, I, it's baffling. The mental, some sort of mental health thing seems the most likely to me, but again, there's a lot of questions left unanswered that we may never know and we might just have to be okay with that. Anyway, thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. Please give it a like just to help out the channel. Thanks for watching till the end if you're still here and I will see y'all in the next one.